Welcome to Focus on the Falls. I'm John Merck here, diving into several different issues today. One of them, kind of the broad overarching topic that we're going to really get into a little bit here is mental health, mental health of our students. We talk a lot about what happens in the classroom and an academic standpoint, what our kids need. What about from the mental health perspective? I want to introduce you to the people that we have here with us. Uh, quite a panel. I'm excited to get into this with Stacy Clem is the director of pupil services here in the district. Stacy, thank you for being with us. Next to Stacy is Jennifer Bonilia, school counselor here at North. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. And then we have Aaron Devonport, a school psychologist. Hi, Aaron. Hi. And down on the end, we have Michelle Olson, Ben Franklin, social worker. Thank you so much, Michelle, Hi. for being here. Uh, a grant that the district has come into, worked hard to land this grant, and now is able to use for several different things. What is the grant, Stacy? kind of in a, in a broader sense encompass? Mm -hmm. So this is our second year of the grant, and it's really been written to help us analyze and focus on our whole system as a whole of what are the services we're providing, and if those services are meeting all the students' needs. Um, are we identifying all of our students who have needs, and are the systems in place um, equally accessing all students to those services? I want to stay with you for just a second, Stacy. When we talk about needs of students, in, in the mental health arena, what are some of the primary concerns? And I know it's hard to generalize because there are little students and bigger mm -hmm. students and different demographics, but are there general concerns or things that you try to think about when we think about what our kids need from a mental health perspective? Um, sure, so I wanna make sure that they all have the same access and access to um, services for um, making sure that they don't have anxieties related to school, connections from teachers from school, just relationships that are positive from people who are going to give them access to an education. And if they don't have access to those um, positive resources or they're struggling with some of their own anxieties despite having access to resources, making sure that we're giving them the needs that they have or the services that um, they're mm -hmm. entitled to. That's such a great point. So equal access that every kid and every kid's family has the same ability to get the touch points, get their needs met as, as another kid, no matter what their demographic situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Jennifer, when you got into this, you know, you do this for a living and now we're in a pandemic. Right. Did you ever envision that we would be having these sort of discussions or the issues that are now facing our kids with the issues that are facing our kids? No, because um, so much of what I do is in person. I'm always with the students. I see them, they see me. And then to all of a sudden not have that easy access to them, to be able to talk to them when I know they need to talk to someone or reach out and check on them and not always getting a response. That's been, you know, one of the big struggles is, you know, there are kids that have needs and you're not always able to get in touch with them and support them in the way that you want to. That's such an interesting point. And Michelle, you work with some of the smallest mm -hmm. kids in our district. Is there a particular challenge making sure they get what they need when you can't be with them in person and their attention is a little bit different than if you're dealing with a 16 year old? Are there unique challenges? Absolutely. And in thinking what Jennifer just um, shared, it's that whole um, piece around engagement and meeting families where they are. So figuring out what potential barriers are, what resources they might need, and then continue with that relationship. And it might be that you're continuing more frequent check-ins in a variety of ways. You know, just stopping by to say hi on your porch, or I'm going to uh, leave you an email or a voicemail message. So really trying to be creative to let families know we care. Erin, we're going to come back to this several times, but we might as well start it right now. Are there resources? Is there a particular resource you want to highlight if parents, families want more information, think like they need help? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So through our grant, we created a mental wellness webpage on the School District of Menominee Falls, and it's intended for staff, students, families, um, whether you live here or not, and it really connects you with resources in our community and national resources as well. Um, mental health is health, so even if you're not struggling, it's really important to do mental wellness check-ins and use the resources at your fingertips. Um, one that our students use a lot is the Hopeline. Um, so that's linked on our website. Um, also, you can text Hopeline to 741741, and it's an anonymous texting line where students can text it 24-7 about any um, issue they might be going through. It could be a breakup. It could be stress. It could be thoughts of self-harm. And a trained professional will text them back and get them the help they need. Jennifer, are you seeing 
angst, anxiety in our students. I, I know our district, I've always been so proud of the way we handle the mental health part of education in our district. Mm -hmm. What emotions are you seeing? What issues are you seeing that you're needing to address? I am seeing um, a lot of heightened anxiety due to all these new stressors in their lives. You know, we have kids that we're fortunate enough to have a lot of our kids here half the week, at least in person. But when they are at home, they're on their own and they have to be able to log on to the computer and there's just and be present in their classes and stay focused. It's a lot different than when you're in a classroom and you have a teacher there giving you cues and reminders. Um, so the anxiety goes up and a lot of parents are working, so they may not be home, at least with the middle school or high school students. So the students are having to learn a new set of skills or practice a set of skills that they've never really had to use before. And, um, and that's causing their anxiety to go up as these added stressors come in. Michelle, the older kids might not want to talk to us about how they feel when they're mm -hmm. 14 or 15, but at least they can verbalize it. When you're talking about kids that are much smaller that are in kindergarten or first or mm -hmm. second grade and they know something's not quite right but maybe they can't wrap their arms around what that means or they mm -hmm. don't have that experience in life to know what's happening does that make it extra tough to make sure the little ones are doing okay and they understand it's okay to feel the way they feel so smaller children maybe older children to communicate through play so getting really creative with using our virtual um, playing games through the computer, connecting that way. So once children are comfortable, they tend to talk more. So that's part of it um, around that, that engagement. And then also supporting families to support their, their youngest, you know, our youngest learners. I see that as my role as well, mm -hmm. because they, you know, with our youngest learners, our families are there with them um, oftentimes um, uh, collaborating with the teacher to um, share lessons. Erin, from strictly a mental health perspective, is it more beneficial if kids can spend some time in the classroom? Is it not that simple? I mean, we're weighing now safety, health, what's good for families and for kids, and a lot of kids are kind of some at school, some virtual. Can you talk about the in-person learning aspect of it and the advantages of that? Mm -hmm. I think every individual is different um, and it comes down to resilience and helping students have those resiliency skills and how to cope when they do feel stressed. Um, one's learning environment be, might be a stressor for one student, but maybe not an, uh, another. Um, so really working with kids to identify what is maybe causing you stress right now or what's getting in the way of your learning and how can we help that. Um, when Michelle was talking about connecting with kids, you know, we were used to maybe having them in our office and talking face to face, but now it might be sending emojis and saying, which mm -hmm. one do you identify with? Let's work through that. Um, so sometimes it's little things like suggesting to get outside or, you know, have a fun session mm -hmm. with someone. Um, but really, it, it really varies on each individual and helping them wherever they're at. Stacy Clem is the director of pupil services, you know, under the leadership of Superintendent Corey Gala and the school board. There's a real collaborative spirit in our district when it comes to mental health and pupil services. Uh, Stacy, are you in contact with other districts? Is there brainstorming and sharing best practices? Is that conversation happen? Yep, yep. I attend a monthly meeting with um, all the with the CISA, everybody who's in our Washington County CISA one area, where we talk about what services we're providing. We're sharing resources that. Um, people are using. We also are really connected with NAMI. So you work with other national mental health organizations to try to yep. sort through best practices and yep. make sure that mm -hmm. you're doing what needs to be done. Yep, and I'm part of the collective impact team specific to mental health. So we collaborate um, every six weeks. I meet with Mary who um, works for a national organization that um, we just connect on resources that they have additional trainings, supports that they provide for students. Mm -hmm. We also use our resources within our high school where they come and they support during our health classes. So we're trying to embed proactive and responsive strategies for students so that they have it when they're feeling mentally well and then also they remember maybe some of those resources when they're at a time where they're not maybe in a good place. Jennifer, you know, a challenge that you guys always deal with every single year is what happens to the kids who don't have a great situation at home? Mm -hmm. And that impacts what happens in the school or in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Now some of those kids are spending more time at home with parents who are stressed out. Yes. How do you handle that challenge? Is that a, a bigger challenge because of the pandemic? 
It is a bigger challenge because of the pandemic, but we continue to provide them the same supports, you know, that we would when they were here. If they were here, it's just differently. So we reach out, you know, through messaging them and we set up meetings with the students and we contact the parents and have conversations with the parents to figure out what can we do to help support you at home and help the family at home to continue your child's learning. And I think most importantly, there's no shame or judgment. There's no stigma around mental wellness or any stressors going on at home. Um, so we know that we're all in this together and really working with families too. The, Eric, Eric, go ahead, Michelle. The beauty of Menominee Falls is that we have a really strong team and team approach. So we have school psychologists, school counselors, school social workers, um, our director of special ed, um, all work, all working together. So what I might think of, or you might think of, we're all coming together from a different lens and um, being creative. I think during these times we have to be even more creative than we were and um, just trying things out again to meet families where they are. Erin, isolation from their classmates and from the school that they're familiar with and the learning processes that they're familiar with, how difficult is that isolation for some kids and how does the district address that? Yeah, I think we're enforcing that um, families and students still stay connected. So whether you're physically close to someone or not, there's ways to connect. And connecting right now is a really big factor to help your mental wellness and we all need to do it. So when we think of mental health, we have to think of how are you physically doing today? How are you mentally doing today? How's your social connections today? Um, there's a lot of um, aspects to mental health. and um, we also have outside therapists in our schools, too, to help students stay connected. So we have CPA, which is a private practice, and St. A's. So they have space within our buildings to help provide students and families therapy services that they need during the school day. So it's helping remove that barrier. Students don't have to worry about driving them to an appointment after school. It's right there to help people not just stay connected with their peers, but stay connected with their mental wellness services. Yeah, and if people want access to different resources and get their questions asked, what's the best way they should do that? Yeah, so the 24-7 therapy service that a lot of our students use is Hopeline. Mm -hmm. And they can text the word Hopeline to 741741 and someone will respond back. So it's 741741. Correct. Yep. That's the number. There's a lot of stuff happening in the district. You can always reach out to the district office if you want to. There are a lot of resources available to our families and to our students in the district. Ladies, thank you so much for spending some time with us. 